Warning klaxons blared as an alien fleet materialized near Neptune, smashing aside its primordial quiet. King Talon of the Nigeans smirked at the puny human scout ship glinting against Sol's rays. Little did the brash alien ruler realize he was about to ignite a war that would shake the galaxy. Magnify, Talon ordered. The view zoomed in on a battered, unimpressive Terran vessel, seemingly lost in the void. How deliciously amusing, Talon thought, grinning wolfishly. These foolish humans wandered right into his empire's maw. Time to teach the upstarts a lesson. Open a channel, his underlings hastened to obey. Talon lounged back in his command throne as the screen crackled to life, revealing a human in a drab gray uniform, Captain Zachary Adams of the UES Prometheus. The arrogant king chuckled darkly. Your primitive toy is trespassing, human. Surrender now and I may show mercy. Adams's eyes flashed defiantly. Negative. You're the one in Earth space. Withdraw immediately or face the consequences. Talon barked a mocking laugh. The gall! Did this creature truly believe his tin can stood a chance? You dare threaten me? Let's see what your ship is made of. All vessels, fire a warning shot. Impossible! Talon snarled, face purpling with rage. Swarm them! I want that ship captured intact. But as the Nigean battlecruisers surged forward, the lone human vessel multiplied on their scopes, sowing chaos with ECM drones. Talon watched in disbelief as the Prometheus danced through his fleet, surgically destroying key systems with pinpoint railgun strikes. Mere minutes later, the once proud Nigen Armada limped away in disarray, trailing atmosphere and sparks. Talon seethed in his chair, hatred etched across his features. He had grossly underestimated these humans. But next time would be different. Next time, their wondrous technology would be his. As the Prometheus docked at New Terra's orbital station, Adams strode into the command center, a fierce tenacity etched on his face. Admiral Landry looked up from the holographic display, his eyes weary but resolute. Adams nodded grimly. It's not over, Admiral. We hurt them, but we also piss them off. They'll be back, and in force. Landry plugged the chip into the console, his eyes widening as the data scrolled across the screen. This... This could change everything. Coordinated strikes on their command ships. We might just have a shot at this. Light years away in the heart of the Nijin Empire, King Talon seethed with barely suppressed rage. His war council cowered before him, none daring to meet his baleful gaze. You assured me the humans were weak, Talon snarled, that their pitiful ships would crumble before our might. And yet here we stand, beaten by a single vessel. Zarn gestured to the holographic map, outlining his plan. A multi-pronged assault, overwhelming their defenses. We will hunt down this Prometheus and take it intact. Their technology will be ours. Talon leaned back, a cruel smile playing across his lips. See that it is done, General. I want that colony burned to ashes and the humans brought to heel. Beside it flew the UES Titan, the pride of the human fleet. Adams's executive officer, Commander Elna Stark, led a squadron of agile fighters ready to harry the enemy and draw their fire. The two fleets clashed in a storm of fire and fury, the humans fighting with a desperate tenacity. The Prometheus and its sister ships danced through the Nigean ranks, their advanced stealth systems rendering them all but invisible. The Nigean fleet pressed forward, their weapons hammering the human defenses. Ships fell on both sides, the void lit by the flames of dying vessels. Adams gritted his teeth, knowing they couldn't hold out much longer. In a daring plan, he led a daring assault on the Nigean command ship, hoping to disrupt their coordination and buy time for the colony to evacuate. But as the Prometheus closed in, a trap was sprung. Fall back, Adams ordered, his voice raw with frustration. All ships, fall back to the colony. Adams leaned forward, his eyes narrowing. Could it be a trap? Another Nijin ploy? Or was there truly a chance, however slim, to turn the tide of this war? The encrypted transmission crackled to life, revealing a grizzled face etched with the scars of countless battles. Captain Adams, this is Marcus Reeves. I've got intel that could turn this war around. Rendezvous at these coordinates. Landry nodded grimly. 
or our only shot, take the Prometheus and a skeleton crew. If we don't hear from you in 48 hours, we'll assume the worst. The Prometheus limped through the asteroid field, its hull still bearing the scars of their last engagement. Adams gripped the command chair, eyes scanning for any sign of an ambush. Instead, they found a hidden base tucked into the heart of a massive asteroid. Reeves wasted no time. He pulled up schematics of Nijin ships, mining facilities, and weapon systems. It all runs on Nijum, he explained. Rare mineral, found on only a handful of worlds. We take that out. We cripple their war machine, Adams finished, a spark of hope igniting in his chest. Adams nodded. Let's get to work. Over the next weeks, the Prometheus led a series of lightning raids on Nijian mining operations. They struck fast and vanished before reinforcements could arrive, leaving destruction in their wake. On one such mission, Adams and Hawkeye's team infiltrated a processing facility on a barren moon. As they planted charges, Adams noticed strange markings on the walls. Sir, called one of the commandos, you need to see this. In a sealed chamber, they found artifacts of impossible complexity, technology far beyond even Nigean capabilities. What the hell is this? Hawkeye breathed. Adams ran his hand over a console covered in alien script. I don't know, but I think we just stumbled onto the source of the Nigean's power. Before they could investigate further, alarms blared. Charges set, Hawkeye reported. Time to go. Meanwhile, in the opulent throne room of the Nigean capital, King Talon paced like a caged animal. How are these humans evading us? He snarled. General Zarn bowed low. My king, perhaps it's time to seek aid from the Galactic Council. Talon's eyes flashed dangerously. Never. I will not show weakness before those meddling fools. With respect, Zarn pressed, we may have no choice. Our Nigeum reserves are critically low. Without it, our fleets will be crippled within months. Talon's shoulders slumped. Make the arrangements, he growled. But this is not over. Ready the doomsday device. If we cannot have this galaxy, no one will. Back on New Terra, Admiral Landry reviewed the latest intelligence reports. A knock at her door revealed an unexpected visitor, a Nigean female with fierce eyes and tribal markings. I am Kira, she said, and I bring an offer of alliance against the tyrant Talon. Landry's eyes narrowed. Why should I trust you? Kira smiled, all teeth. Because I can give you the location of Talon's secret weapon, the one that could destroy entire star systems. As the Prometheus raced back to New Terra, Adams knew the final confrontation was approaching. The fate of humanity in the entire galaxy would soon be decided. The facility loomed before them, a sprawling complex of interconnected structures nestled within an asteroid. As the Prometheus docked silently, Adams led the strike team through the airlock. They moved swiftly through dimly lit corridors, dispatching Nigian guards with ruthless efficiency. The team's hacker, a wiry woman codenamed Cypher, worked feverishly at each security checkpoint. We're in, she whispered, the final door sliding open with a hiss. My God, Brennan breathed, what is this? Adams approached a central console, his eyes widening as he scanned the alien text. They've done it. They've harnessed dark energy. A klaxon blared, red lights bathing the chamber. We've been made, Cypher warned. Security's converging on our position. Grab what we can and move, Adams ordered. He wrenched a pulsing black core from its housing, alarms shrieking in protest. The team fought their way back to the Prometheus, Nigian weapons fire nipping at their heels. As they broke free of the asteroid's mass, enemy ships swarmed from hidden hangars. All hands, brace for evasive maneuvers, Adams barked, strapping himself into the command chair. The Prometheus danced through a hail of energy beams, its superior agility allowing them to slip past the Nigean blockade. The colony's governing council erupted into heated debate. Councillor Vega thumped his hand on the table. We must use this weapon. It's our only chance against the Nigean onslaught. And risk the wrath of every other spacefaring race? Councillor Chen countered. We'd be seen as monsters. In the sterile confines of a hidden laboratory, human scientists poured over the stolen dark energy core. Dr. Alara Voss, her eyes ringed with exhaustion, 
manipulated holographic models of subatomic particles. If we can crack this, she muttered, we might have a chance. The human Nijin conflict threatens us all, she declared to the assembled dignitaries. We must intervene for the good of the galaxy. On her private comm channel, Victor Klein's gravelly voice chuckled. Well played, my dear. Our profit margins will be astronomical. In the throne room of the Nigean capital, King Talon's rage was palpable. Courtiers cowered as he hurled a priceless artifact against the wall. Find that weapon, he roared. I want every ship, every soldier diverted to hunting down those human vermin. General Zarn bowed low, hiding the doubt in his eyes. As you command, my king. As Zarn strode from the chamber, his mind whirled with contingency plans. Talon's obsession would be their downfall if left unchecked. Perhaps it was time to reach out to more reasonable elements within the Empire. The war raged on, but the balance had shifted. Human guerrilla strikes hammered Nigean supply lines, exploiting the weakness created by Talon's reallocation of forces. Yet even as they gained ground, Adams knew the true test was yet to come. It's suicide, Admiral Landry said, her voice tight. Landry's fingers drummed against the tactical table. And if we fail? Then we're no worse off than we are now, Adams replied. He gestured to the assembled team, Commander Elena Stark, her olive skin etched with willpower, Sergeant Brennan and his battle-hardened commandos, and Kean, the deep-cover operative whose eyes never seemed to rest. The vultures are circling, Klein growled. My backers want results. Zara's lips curled into a predatory smile. Tell them to ready their checkbooks. I've procured evidence of Talon's planet killer. The Council will have no choice but to intervene. Neither noticed the slight shimmer of an active camouflage field retreating down the corridor. My lord, one brave soul ventured, reports of unrest on our outer worlds. General Zarn bowed low, hiding the calculations behind his eyes. As you command, my king. The Prometheus dropped out of hyperspace at the edge of the Nigean system, piggybacking on the transponder codes of a Klein Industries freighter. As they approached the sprawling capital, Adams's team donned their stealth gear. As they neared the palace, the comms crackled to life. Ambassador Zara's voice rang out across all channels, her words dripping with feigned outrage as she presented her evidence to the Galactic Council. Time's up, Brennan growled. They burst into the throne room, pulse rifles at the ready. Talon spun, shock giving way to rage as he reached for a concealed weapon. Adams's shot caught him square in the chest. Alarms blared as Nijin reinforcements swarmed towards the palace. Zara's schemes unraveled, the council chambers erupting into chaos. We're pinned down, Brennan shouted, returning fire from behind a twisted console. Adams's mind raced. They'd killed Talon but the situation was rapidly spiraling out of control. His calm crackled to life, Commander Stark's voice tight with urgency. Captain, General Zarn's forces have seized control of the capital. They're converging on your position. Before Adams could respond, a thunderous explosion rocked the facility. Alarms blared as the chamber shook violently. The realization hit Adams like a physical blow. Their only escape route, destroyed. But as the chamber began to collapse around them, he understood Stark's daring plan. The dark energy core flickered and sputtered, its containment field destabilizing. Nijin troops scrambled in panic, abandoning their assault as the very air seemed to warp and twist. They'd barely made it thirty meters when the core detonated. A wall of impossible energy slammed into them, hurling the team like rag dolls. Adams felt ribs crack as he smashed into a support pillar. Then darkness swallowed him. He awoke to the taste of blood and Brennan's insistent shaking. Cap, we gotta move. More troops incoming. Adams forced himself upright, wincing at the stabbing pain in his side. The chamber was a nightmare of twisted metal and sparking circuitry. Half their team lay motionless under debris. Here, Elena's voice called. She'd found a maintenance tunnel, barely large enough to crawl through. As they pulled themselves into the cramped passage, the sound of Nigean voices grew louder. Adams gritted his teeth against the pain, willing his battered body forward. 
Miles above, aboard the new Terran flagship Defiant, Admiral Landry's face was grim as she surveyed the tactical hologram. The Nigean homeworld blazed with weapons fire as Zarn's loyalists battled Talon's remaining forces. Still no word from Captain Adams, she asked. Her exo shook his head. Nothing since the Prometheus went dark. Landry's mind focused. She'd sent them into this mess. She wouldn't abandon them now. The bridge erupted into a flurry of activity as the battered human fleet engaged their drives, plunging towards the heart of Nigean space. There! Kean pointed to a half-collapsed communications array. If we can boost the signal, maybe we can reach... His words cut off as a barrage of plasma fire rained down. Zarn's troops had found them. Adams dove for cover, his side screaming in protest. They were out of options, out of time. As he raised his rifle, preparing for one final stand, the sky lit up with new energy signatures. Human warships punched through the atmosphere, their weapons blazing. Kira's rebel fighters swarmed from hidden bases, engaging Zarn's forces in vicious dogfights. Now that's a sight for sore eyes, Brennan grinned, blood trickling from a gash on his forehead. Aboard the Defiant, Landry's blood ran cold as she realized the trap they'd walked into. Sandwiched between Zarn's regrouping forces and Zara's overwhelming fleet, she faced an impossible choice. Admiral, her exo said quietly, what are your orders? She took a deep breath. All ships, prepare for emergency slipstream jump. Coordinates to follow. Admiral, her exo's brow furrowed, we can't leave. We have no choice, Landry's voice was steel. Rear guard vessels, delay the enemy, buy us time. The human fleet disengaged in a desperate maneuver. Energy beams lashed out from Zara's ships, grasping for the fleeing vessels. Several human crafts shuddered, caught in the merciless grip of tractor beams. Their sacrifice allowed the others to slip away. Hours passed in tense silence as they navigated the labyrinthine tunnels. Finally, they emerged into a cavernous chamber filled with makeshift living quarters and jury-rigged equipment. Kira's eyes swept the room her posture rigid. A shadow detached itself from a nearby alcove. Kian stepped forward, his face a mask of cold drive. I'm afraid you're right, he said, raising a weapon. Realization hit Adams like a physical blow. You son of a... The chamber erupted in chaos. Hidden galactic operatives sprung from concealment, their weapons trained on the humans. Adams dove for cover, his mind racing. How long had Kian been playing them? Adams ran, Kira at his heels. Behind them, the staccato of weapons fire echoed through the tunnels. Stark's voice, defiant to the last, rang out before being cut brutally short. They emerged onto the war-torn streets, commandeering a battered Nigean shuttle. As they clawed for altitude, Adams's hands shook on the controls. Stark's final words echoed in his mind, a confession and a goodbye. A burst of data flooded their systems. Coordinates, nothing more. The massive ship shimmered and vanished into another layer of reality. Landry's fingers drummed against her chair. Follow it, she ordered. The human ships plunged after the alien vessel, deeper into the unknown. On New Terra, klaxons blared as the early warning systems flared to life. Colonial officials rushed to fortify their meager defenses. A transmission crackled through, heavily encrypted. He took a shuddering breath. Admiral Landry, if you're receiving this, keep the colony hidden. I'm going after Zara. It's our only chance. The transmission cut off, leaving the new Terran officials in stunned silence. Beyond the system's edge, Ambassador Zara's armada gathered, poised to strike. Incoming! A technician's shout broke the stillness. On the main view screen, a swarm of energy signatures materialized at the edge of the system. Admiral Landry's expression resolute. Battle stations, all ships, defensive formation Epsilon. As New Terra's meager fleet scrambled to intercept, the Defiant and her battered companions emerged from slipstream in an unknown region of space. Klaxons blared as the ship's sensors registered an immense structure dominating the system. My God, Landry breathed, staring at the colossal ring world filling their view screens. Before anyone could react, Sleek vessels surrounded them, 
bathing the human ships in shimmering energy fields. Weapons and propulsion systems went dark. A figure materialized on the bridge, tall, ethereal, with eyes that seemed to hold the wisdom of ages. I am Xandar of the Architects, it intoned. You will come with us. Moments later, Landry and her senior staff found themselves in a vast chamber aboard the alien megastructure. Xandar and several of its kind regarded them with inscrutable expressions. You stand at a crossroads, Xandar said. We offer you knowledge to resist the tyranny that threatens your kind. But first, you must prove your persistence. A holographic display flickered to life, showing a Dominion colony world teeming with millions of lives. This world refuses to yield, Xandar continued. Destroy it, and our alliance is sealed. The choice is yours, Xandar interrupted. But know that even now, your enemies move against you. The display shifted, revealing Zara's forces converging on New Terra. Dominion weapon platforms unleashed devastating barrages against the colony's defenses. On the planet's surface, Marcus Reeves and his resistance fighters raced against time. Upload faster, dammit, he snarled, fingers flying across a makeshift console. The virus that could turn the tide against the Dominion's automated weapons inched towards completion. In New Terra's command bunker, Sergeant Brennan's voice crackled over the comm. They've breached the outer perimeter. We need those codes, now! A junior officer, Piotr, hesitated before transmitting the critical command codes. Unbeknownst to his comrades, Klein's agents had turned him days earlier. The moment the codes left his console, Dominion forces began systematically dismantling New Terra's defenses. Aboard the Architect's ring world, Captain Adams' mind raced. The ultimatum before him was unconscionable, yet inaction meant certain doom for humanity. He stared at the holographic colony, a desperate plan forming. Adams outlined his audacious gambit, a controlled implosion of the colony's reactor core. It would devastate the surface, crippling Dominion forces while preserving the majority of the population in subterranean shelters. Xandar conferred with its fellows in a language beyond human comprehension. Finally, it turned back to Adams. You may proceed, but know that failure will doom not only your people, but countless others across the galaxy. In the command bunker, Admiral Landry received Adams's transmission. Her face hardened as she absorbed the magnitude of what he proposed. With a silent prayer, she gave the order to begin evacuating civilians to the deepest shelters. Status report, he barked noting with satisfaction the new holographic displays flickering to life around him. Adams nodded, studying the tactical readouts. The human fleet hung in formation, their hulls gleaming with unfamiliar alloys. Sleek alien craft intermixed with the earthborn vessels, a motley assortment of rebels united against a common foe. Weapons free, Adams commanded. Target military installations only. Multiple Dominion signatures detected, the sensor officer called out. They're scrambling to intercept. Let them come, Adam said grimly. The battle was short and devastating. Dominion ships, once the scourge of human forces, found themselves outclassed in every engagement. Their weapons splashed harmlessly against impenetrable shields, while the human fleet carved through their ranks with surgical precision. As the last Dominion cruiser fell silent, Adams allowed himself a moment of grim satisfaction. Set course for the next target he ordered. We're just getting started. Weeks passed in a blur of hit-and-run attacks. The newly empowered human resistance struck from hidden bases, decimating Dominion fleets and liberating subjugated worlds. With each victory, more aliens flocked to their banner, swelling the ranks of the rebellion. How is this possible? She snarled at her advisors. They were broken, defeated. A trembling subordinate cleared his throat. It appears they've Acquired some form of advanced technology, Ambassador. Our analysts are still trying to... Are irrelevant, Zara cut him off. This infection must be purged, regardless of the cost. As Zara's increasingly desperate tactics played out across the stars, cracks began to form in the Dominion's power structure. Klein's representatives, their portfolios bleeding red, sought backroom deals to cut their losses. The war is unsustainable a Klein executive argued via encrypted channel. We must negotiate while we still have leverage. Zara's laughter was cold and brittle. 
Negotiate with vermin? No. We will see this through to the bitter end. Either humanity burns, or we do. The channel went dark, leaving the Klein representative staring at a blank screen. With a heavy sigh, he opened a new transmission. It was time to explore alternative options. A searing pain erupted in her side. Kira stumbled, her fingers coming away slick with blood. She turned to see a Dominion guard, his weapon still smoking. Go, she ordered her team. Complete the mission. As consciousness faded, Kira saw her comrades disappear around a corner. She allowed herself a small smile. At least some would escape. At least some would live to fight another day. Kira stood proud, even with a gun to her head. Her final words rang out across a hundred worlds. You can kill me, Zara, but you can't kill an idea. Freedom will prevail. The gunshot echoed through Adams's quarters long after the transmission ended. He clenched his fists, a cold fury settling over him. Enough, he said quietly. No more half measures. Adam strode onto the bridge, his face set with unbreakable spirit. Call in every ship, every ally we have, he ordered. It's time for Operation Goliath Fall. Sir, his XO interrupted, we've detected a security leak. Parts of the plan may be compromised. Adams considered for a moment, weighing the risks. We push forward, he decided. The element of surprise is still our best weapon. Adams's voice crackled over the comms as his ship dove through a hail of enemy fire. All units, engage! Today we end this war! The battle raged across the void of space, each side fighting with the desperation of those who know defeat means annihilation. And deep within Zara's command nexus, human agents raced against time to upload their damning evidence. The infiltration teams moved with practice precision through the labyrinthine corridors of Zara's command nexus. Sweat beaded on their brows as they narrowly avoided detection, ducking into alcoves and maintenance shafts to evade patrols. Delta team in position, a whispered voice crackled over the secure comm channel. Captain Adams acknowledged from his position on the bridge of the Defiant. Execute phase two. Within the Nexus, human saboteurs worked feverishly at access terminals. Lines of code scrolled across their screens as they uploaded the virus designed to overload the station's reactor core. The infiltration teams exchanged grim looks. Their window of opportunity was closing fast. Energy beams lanced out from the rebel fleet, hammering at the Nexus defensive screens. Explosions blossomed along its hull as the shielding began to fail. Zara strode onto her command deck, fury etched on her face. Status report! Impossible, Zara snarled. But the readouts didn't lie. She whirled to face her bridge crew. Initiate emergency protocols. Prepare my flagship for immediate departure. As Zara's loyalists scrambled to evacuate, Adam seized the moment. All ships, this is it. Concentrate all firepower on that reactor housing. Let's finish this. The combined firepower of the rebel fleet slammed into the now exposed reactor section. Massive detonations rippled across the Nexus superstructure. Zara stumbled as her command deck shuddered violently. Through the viewports, she watched in disbelief as her prized command Nexus began to tear itself apart. Get us out of here, she roared. Her flagship disengaged from its docking clamps, engines flaring as it pulled away from the doomed station. Behind them, a series of spectacular explosions consumed the Nexus in a furious conflagration. Aboard the Defiant, a ragged cheer went up, but Adams knew the battle was not nearly finished. Track that flagship, he ordered. She won't get away that easily. Zara's eyes blazed with cold fury as she watched the remnants of her command nexus vanish into the void. She turned to her officers, her voice low and dangerous. Set course for the human colony world, New Terra. A cruel smile played across her lips. It's time we settled this, once and for all. As Zara's remaining forces converged on humanity's fledgling homeworld, Adams raced to intercept. The fate of two civilizations hung in the balance, with the galaxy itself as their battlefield. Status report, Adams barked, his eyes scanning the tactical readouts. Adams' expression resolute. Time to arrival? The Defiance hangar bay bustled with activity, as Adams briefed his strike team. 
Men and women in nondescript maintenance uniforms checked weapons and equipment, their faces set with unyielding commitment. Listen up, Adams said, his voice cutting through the low murmur of conversation. Our target is the architect's quarantine zone. Inside, we'll find a nanoweapon capable of shutting down every piece of advanced tech in the galaxy. It's our only shot at stopping Zara. Adams met Hawkins's gaze. I don't like it either, Rick. But if we succeed, we'll have the means to end this war for good. Sometimes you have to risk everything to save everything. The stealth ships slipped away from the Defiant, their advanced cloaking technology rendering them invisible to the Ringworld security systems. Adams piloted the lead craft, expertly maneuvering through the labyrinthine structure of the architect's creation. The strike team moved with practiced efficiency, bypassing security checkpoints and dodging patrols. Adams led them deeper into the quarantine zone, the air growing thick with an electric tension. Fan out, Adams ordered. Secure the perimeter while I access the core. He had barely taken two steps when alarms blared to life. Architect guardians materialized from hidden alcoves, energy weapons humming with deadly intent. Contact, Hawkins shouted, diving for cover as the air filled with sizzling bolts of plasma. Adams rolled behind a console, returning fire. His team fought with desperate intensity, but they were outnumbered and outgunned. A scream of pain cut through the chaos. Adams turned to see Hawkins stumbling backward, a smoking hole in his chest. The lieutenant crashed into a bank of controls, his body convulsing. No, Adams yelled, but it was too late. Sir, his XO called out. The nano weapon, it's activating. Everyone out, he shouted. I'll initiate the shutdown sequence. Go! His team hesitated for a split second before following orders. They dragged Hawkins's unconscious form toward the exit, laying down covering fire as they retreated. Adams worked feverishly, sweat beating on his brow. The chamber shuddered ominously as the nanoweapon's power built to critical levels. He could hear the pounding footsteps of architect reinforcements drawing closer. With a final command, Adams triggered the containment protocols. Energy fields sprang to life around the chamber as he sprinted for the exit. He dove through the closing blast doors, feeling the heat of an implosion at his back. Gasping for breath, Adams staggered to his feet. His team had made it to their stealth ship, its engines already warming for takeoff. Go, go, he yelled, practically falling into the cockpit. What's happening? Adams demanded. His exo's face was pale. Sir, we've been locked out. The architects, they know what we tried to do. Through the view screen, Adams watched as their ship was tractored into a secure hangar. Grim-faced architect security forces surrounded them, weapons at the ready. Adams closed his eyes, a leaden weight settling in his stomach. He had failed, and now humanity would pay the price. The transmission dissolved into static as dark energy weapons rained down on the colony world. Adams and his officers could only watch in horror as humanity's last refuge burned. The view screen flickered, cutting off Admiral Landry's desperate plea. Adams hit his fist against the control panel, impotent rage coursing through him as he watched New Terra's defenses crumble under the Dominion assault. Captain, his XO said voice tight, we're receiving a transmission from the Architect Council. Adams's eyebrows furrowed. And if we refuse? Then you will face the consequences alone. Sir, Lieutenant Hawkins spoke up, his voice ragged. What do we do now? Before Adams could respond, alarms blared throughout the detention area. The cell's energy field flickered and died. What the hell, Adams muttered, cautiously stepping into the corridor. The few architect guards lay sprawled on the floor, their systems apparently offline. Reeves, how did you... Adams's mind raced. What about New Terra? We can't just abandon... Sir, his XO interrupted. We're picking up a transmission from one of the evacuation shuttles. It's Admiral Landry. The comm crackled to life. Landry's voice was strained, punctuated by the sounds of weapons fire. Adams, if you're receiving this, we have critical intel. Victor Klein, he's been working for the corporatists. We have him in custody, but he's wounded. He says... He says he has information that could change everything. Adams closed his eyes, the weight of command settling heavily on his shoulders. He took a deep breath, 
then turned to his crew. We have no choice, he said, his voice firm. We retreat through the gateway, take whatever personnel and resources we can evacuate. I'll remain behind with a rear guard to cover your escape. Captain, no, Hawkins began to protest. The next hours passed in a blur of frantic activity. Adams coordinated with the scattered human forces, directing as many survivors as possible to the hidden architect gateway. All the while, Dominion troops pushed ever closer to their position. As Adams took up a defensive position, he watched his crew disappear through the shimmering gateway. The sounds of battle grew closer. He gripped his weapon tightly, prepared to sell his life dearly. Suddenly, Hawkins was at his side again. Couldn't let you have all the fun, Captain, he said with a grim smile. Before Adams could respond, the far wall exploded inward. Dominion shock troops poured through the breach, energy weapons blazing. Go, Hawkins shouted, shoving Adams toward the portal. I'll hold them off. Adams stumbled backward, reaching for his friend. But Hawkins was already moving, laying down a blistering field of fire. The last thing Adams saw before the gateway's energy enveloped him was Hawkins' determined face, illuminated by weapons fire. The universe twisted, folded, then snapped back into focus. Adams found himself sprawled on rocky ground beneath an alien sky. As he struggled to his feet, he became aware of figures emerging from concealment around him. A scarred Nijin stepped forward, lowering his weapon. Captain Adams, he asked cautiously, we've been expecting you. Adams looked around, taking in the motley group of aliens, species he recognized and others entirely unfamiliar. All bore the haunted look of those who had suffered under Zara's tyranny. Adams nodded slowly, his mind already racing with possibilities. What do you know about something called Tartarus Station? Adams blinked, his eyes adjusting to the harsh light of the alien planetoid. The Nigean's words echoed in his mind as he surveyed the ragtag group of resistance fighters. Tartarus, Adams said, his voice hoarse. Victor Klein mentioned it before we evacuated. What do you know about it? The scarred Nigean clicked his mandibles. Zara's mobile fortress, a behemoth capable of constructing entire fleets. We've lost good people trying to gather intel on it. Adams reached into his pocket, withdrawing a small data chip. Then this might be exactly what we need. The central reactor core, Adams said, highlighting a pulsing red node. It powers their shipyards. If we can sabotage it. We cripple Zara's ability to replace her losses, the Nigean finished mandibles clicking rapidly in excitement. Adams nodded. Exactly, but getting inside won't be easy. A voice spoke up from the back of the group. Perhaps not as difficult as you think, human. Adams considered the plan, mind racing through potential scenarios. It's risky, but it might be our best shot. We'll need a small team, too many, and we risk detection. Over the next few hours, Adams worked with Zarn and the resistance leaders to select operatives and finalize their strategy. As the twin suns of the alien world dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows across the rocky landscape, Adams addressed his team. This mission is voluntary, he said, meeting each pair of eyes, human and alien alike. The risks are extreme. If we're discovered... Days later, Adams found himself aboard a cramped transport ship surrounded by a sea of miserable faces. The stench of unwashed bodies and fear permeated the recycled air. He kept his head down, blending in with the other recruits as Tartarus Station loomed before them. The massive structure filled the view screen, dwarfing even the largest Dominion warships. As they drew closer, Adams could make out the constant movement of construction drones and supply vessels swarming its surface. Security checkpoints were a gauntlet of biometric scanners and invasive questioning. Adams held his breath as the guard waved a scanner over his forged identity chip. After an agonizing moment, it beeped green. He was in. As they neared the labor assignment area, Adams caught a flicker of movement in his peripheral vision. A lithe alien figure slipped between shadows. Un Their eyes met for a brief instant, and Adams saw a spark of recognition. I am Nola, she whispered, her multifaceted eyes darting warily. We have little time. Follow me. She led him through a maze of maintenance tunnels, finally emerging in a small, hidden alcove. 
A bank of computer terminals hummed softly. Adams committed the information to memory, his mind already formulating new strategies. But before he could thank her, alarms blared to life. Heavy footsteps echoed down the corridor. Surprise inspection, Nola hissed, fear evident in her alien features. You there, a guard shouted. Identify yourself. The guard's eyes narrowed suspiciously. We have no record of Terran operatives aboard this station. Adams felt the muzzle of a weapon press against his back. He raised his hands slowly, knowing the gambit had failed. But as the guards led them away, he caught Nola's eye. A silent understanding passed between them. The operation wasn't over. Not yet. The guards' grip tightened on Adams' arm as they marched him and Nola through Tartarus Station's sterile corridors. Alarms still blared, but a new urgency filled the air. Dominion troops rushed past, their faces etched with barely concealed panic. Her multifaceted eyes darted left and right. I'm not certain, but... A thunderous explosion rocked the station. The guards stumbled, momentarily loosening their hold. Adams didn't hesitate. He drove his elbow into the nearest guard's throat, wrenching the weapon from his grasp. Nola moved with fluid grace, her lithe form twisting as she disarmed the second guard. This way, she hissed, leading Adams down a maintenance shaft. They emerged into chaos. Alarms shrieked as Dominion personnel scrambled in all directions. Through a nearby viewport, Adams caught a glimpse of massive energy discharges arcing across the station's superstructure. The reactor, he breathed. They did it. Adams allowed himself a grim smile. Then it's time for phase two. They fought their way through the panicked crowds, making for the central control hub. Adams's mind raced, piecing together the fragmentary comm chatter. Mick and Sarah were leading teams to disable the docking systems, while the main strike force held the reactor chamber against increasingly desperate assaults. How long can you hold them out? Adams asked as Nola's fingers danced across the control interface. Long enough, she replied, her alien features set in relentless drive. But your people will need to move quickly. Adams' teeth gritted. He'd heard of Zara's brutal enforcer, an alien warlord known for his savagery in combat. They're heading for the reactor core, Nola continued. If they reach it... Then we stop them, Adams finished, checking his weapon. Can you get us there? Nola's eyes gleamed. Watch me. In the center of it all stood Garrett, a towering figure of corded muscle and gleaming cybernetics. His guttural roars spurred his troops onward, even as the reactor core pulsed with ominous energy. Adams waded into the fray, his stolen Dominion weapon spitting death. He caught glimpses of his team, bloodied but unbowed, giving everything they had to hold the line. A bestial bellow cut through the din. Adams turned to see Garrett charging toward him, massive fists raised. The human captain dove aside, feeling the rush of air as the alien warlord's blow missed by inches. Adams stumbled, his foot catching on a fallen comrade. Garrett seized the opening, driving forward with a roar of triumph. Pain exploded through Adams's torso as the alien's blade-like appendage pierced his abdomen. Time seemed to slow. Adams saw Nola across the chamber her eyes wide with horror. He saw his team, still fighting despite the overwhelming odds, and he saw the reactor core, pulsing with terrifying energy. With the last of his strength, Adams reached for the control panel. Garrett's eyes widened in realization, but it was too late. Adams's bloodied hand slammed down on the emergency release, triggering the final detonation sequence. A wave of searing energy engulfed Garrett, reducing the alien warlord to ash in an instant. Adams collapsed, his vision darkening as Nola rushed to his side. Nola's touch was gentle as she lifted him. We're not leaving you behind. Stay with me, human, she hissed, her multifaceted eyes darting between Adams and the path ahead. Adams fought against the encroaching darkness, his body a mass of pain. He caught glimpses of other resistance fighters helping the wounded all racing against the station's imminent destruction. The deck pitched violently beneath them as they reached the evacuation pods. Get in! Nola shouted, shoving Adams into the cramped interior. Others piled in behind them, the pod's capacity stretched to its limit. With a pneumatic hiss, the hatch sealed shut. 
When he awoke, it was to the sterile smell of a medical bay and the dull ache of partially healed wounds. Mick Corey's face swam into view, tight with concern but tinged with something else, a unyielding commitment. Welcome back to the land of the living, boss, Mick said, his voice rough. We need you. Mick's eyes hardened. We've intercepted Dominion transmissions. Tartarus was on its way to reinforce Zara's fleet at Altair Prime, our home. The words hit Adams like a physical blow. Altair Prime, humanity's last major stronghold, now under siege by Zara's nightmarish armada. He closed his eyes, processing the implications. You're out of commission, Mick replied, his tone brooking no argument. But we've got a plan. It's crazy, but it just might work. Over the next hour, Mick laid out the audacious gambit. Using the blast wave from Tartarus's cover, they would infiltrate Zara's blockade around Earth. Kavi, their rebel engineer, had already begun modifying cargo haulers with salvaged Dominion stealth tech. We ride in like Trojans, Mick explained, his eyes gleaming with a dangerous light. Then we hit them where it hurts. Adams nodded, his tactical mind already racing through scenarios. It's risky, but it's our best shot. You have command, Mick. Make it happen. The next days were a blur of feverish activity. Adams, confined to his medical pod, coordinated with Nola to analyze Dominion fleet patterns. Outside, Kavi's team worked tirelessly, transforming lumbering haulers into stealthy boarding craft. All ships execute infiltration pattern, Mick's voice crackled over the comm. May whatever gods you believe in watch over us now. The modified cargo haulers peeled off, their stealth drives engaged. On the tactical display, Adams watched as they vanished from sensors, indistinguishable from the constant barrage of debris impacting Zara's fleet. Minutes stretched into agonizing hours as they waited for news. Then, like a string of firecrackers igniting, explosions began to blossom across Zara's fleet. Dominion capital ships, once invincible bastions of power, listed helplessly as rebel strike teams emerged from their Trojan vessels. It's working, Nola breathed, her alien features alight with fierce joy. The battle that followed was unlike anything in human history. Rebel ships darted between the hulks of crippled Dominion vessels, using them as cover against the swarms of hunter-killers Zara deployed in desperation. Each strike opened new wounds in the once impenetrable blockade. In the heart of the maelstrom, Landry's flagship emerged, guns blazing. It drove straight for Zara's command dreadnought, hammering it with a relentless barrage of Nova weapons and antimatter warheads. The massive vessel, once thought invincible, shuddered under the assault. Look, Nola cried, pointing to the tactical display. Zara's flagship, it's retreating. A ragged cheer went up from the bridge crew, but Adam's eyes narrowed, a cold dread settling in his gut. He knew Zara, knew the depths of her cruelty. This wasn't over. His fears were confirmed moments later, as new energy signatures blossomed across Zara's remaining fleet. All ships, brace for impact! Adam shouted, but it was too late. As the bombardment finally ceased, an eerie quiet fell over the battlefield. Zara's fleet, bloodied but still dangerous, retreated to lick its wounds. The resistance forces regrouped, taking stock of their losses and the devastation wrought upon their homeworld. In the command center, Mick Corey's eyes blazed with a mixture of fury and perseverance. We've bloodied their nose, he growled, but Zara's still out there. We need to finish this. Adams nodded, his mind already racing. We've proven they're not invincible. Now we take the fight to them, all the way to the Galactic Council itself. As the resistance began to rally, preparing for one final, desperate push, a coded transmission came through. It was from their deep cover agent within the council, bearing news that would change everything. The coded transmission crackled through the command center, its contents sending a ripple of tension through the assembled leadership. Reeves, her face drawn with fatigue, delivered the news in clipped tones. Zara's abandoning the Altair Prime campaign. She's pulling back to the Galactic Council capital. Reeves' lips curled into a grim smile. Because we're not alone anymore. Uprisings are erupting across Dominion space. Every subjugated world is seizing this chance to strike back. We need to capitalize on this, Admiral Landry growled. 
her hands clenched into fists. Hit Zara while she's reeling. Corey nodded, his eyes blazing with newfound purpose. Agreed, but we do this smart. Reeves, what else do we know? The intelligence officer's fingers danced across her data pad. Zara's retreated to an impregnable fortress overlooking the council capital. Our deep cover asset reports. Christ. She paled visibly. She's got a planet killer weapon. Dark energy reactors. If she fires that thing, then we make damn sure she never gets the chance, Corey cut in. He turned to the assembled leadership, his voice ringing with authority. I want every liberated world tapped for resources. We're building an armada unlike anything this galaxy's ever seen. The next days were a blur of feverish activity. Corey worked tirelessly, coordinating with newly freed planets, assembling a fleet that grew by the hour. Stealth probes slipped past Zara's defenses, mapping the labyrinthine fortress that housed her last high-stakes endeavor. The Admiral nodded grimly. Consider it done. Kavi, the rebel engineer, spoke up. We've got the stealth tech to get them in, but once they're inside... He shook his head. It's going to be a bloodbath. Corey's face hardened. Which is why I'll be leading the third team personally. We breach the council chambers, extract Chancellor Vexus, cut the head off the snake. As the massive fleet assembled in the void of space, Corey found himself aboard the lead infiltration ship. The fortress loomed before them, a titanium leviathan overflowing with weapons. Beside him, Nola's alien features were set in perseverance. Nola's multifaceted eyes gleamed. And miss all the fun? Not a chance, human. The signal came through. Across the vast emptiness of space, Admiral Landry's voice crackled over the comm. All ships commence operation. May fortune favor the bold. With that, the resistance armada surged forward. Dominion ships rose to meet them, energy weapons lighting up the void. In the chaos of the opening salvos, Corey's infiltration teams slipped through the maelstrom, stealth drives engaged. They reached the council chambers, only to find their path blocked by a nightmarish figure. Garrett, Zara's brutal enforcer, stood before them. His cybernetic enhancements glowed with malevolent energy, a cruel smile twisting his features. I was hoping you'd make it this far, the alien warlord growled. I owe you for our last encounter. Corey raised his weapon, acutely aware of the dwindling time. Somewhere in the bowels of this fortress, his teams raced to disable the planet killer, and beyond these walls, Landry's fleet fought for survival against overwhelming odds. As Garrett charged forward with inhuman speed, Corey knew the next moments would determine the fate of not just humanity, but countless worlds across the galaxy. The true test was only beginning. Corey's muscles screamed as he parried Garrett's cybernetic fist, the impact reverberating through his bones. The council chamber echoed with the clash of metal on flesh, punctuated by the distant rumble of explosions. You're outmatched, human, Garrett snarled, his augmented limbs blurring with inhuman speed. Corey ducked, feeling the rush of air as Garrett's strike passed millimeters from his head. He countered with a desperate lunge, his plasma blade finding a gap in the enforcer's armor. Garrett howled, more in rage than pain, as acrid smoke curled from the wound. The moment's distraction was all Corey needed. He slammed his palm against a concealed device on his belt, unleashing a pulse of electromagnetic energy. Garrett's cybernetics sputtered and sparked, leaving the brute momentarily paralyzed. His alien companion materialized from the shadows, her multifaceted eyes gleaming as she jammed a neural disruptor against Garrett's skull. The enforcer's eyes rolled back, and he collapsed in a heap of twitching metal and flesh. Corey allowed himself a single ragged breath before tapping his comm. Chancellor Vex is secured. Extraction team, move in. The next hours passed in a blur of tactical feeds and frantic communication. Corey watched helplessly as Admiral Landry's fleet was slowly overwhelmed, forced into a fighting retreat that left gaping holes in their perimeter. His gut twisted as he saw the fortress's internal defenses surge, cutting off the team still battling towards the reactor cores. We have to pull back, Landry's voice crackled over the comm, strained but resolute. Any more losses and we won't have a fleet left to fight with. 
Corey's fists clenched as he watched the surviving infiltration teams, Kavi and Sarah among them, overwhelmed by waves of Dominion troops. The feed cut to static as they were dragged away. Days later, Corey stood before a hastily assembled war council on the fringes of former council space. The holographic displays showed a galaxy in chaos, liberated worlds aflame, Dominion forces regrouping for a final apocalyptic push. Chancellor Vexus, still bearing the marks of her captivity, stepped forward. Her crystalline skin caught the light as she addressed the assembled leaders. There may be one last gambit, she said, her voice carrying an otherworldly resonance, but the cost could be unimaginable. Corey leaned forward, hope and dread warring in his chest, as Vexus revealed the existence of the Nexus dimension. The chamber erupted into heated debate. The risks of unleashing such power weighed against the certainty of annihilation. As the council dispersed to prepare for the final push, Corey's data pad chimed with an incoming transmission. His blood ran cold as he saw Zara's face, twisted with malicious glee. Your Admiral Landry sends her regards, the Dominion leader purred. The camera panned to show Kavi, Sarah, and the other captured rebels lined up before firing squads. I thought you might want to witness their final moments. What have you done? Zara snarled, but Corey had already cut the feed. He turned to his assembled strike team, a motley assortment of humans and aliens united in desperate purpose. As they boarded their stealth dropship, Corey allowed himself one final glance at the stars. Somewhere out there, Zara's doomsday fleet gathered. He took a deep breath, steadying himself for the battle to come. Portal chambers two levels down, Nola whispered, her alien eyes gleaming in the dim emergency lighting. They moved swiftly through deserted corridors, the eerie silence broken only by distant explosions. As they rounded the final corner, the massive doors of the Nexus chamber loomed before them. Too easy, Corey muttered, signaling for a defensive formation. As if on cue, Alarms blared to life. The corridor behind them erupted with weapons fire as Dominion troops poured in from hidden access points. Breach the chamber, Corey shouted over the din. I'll hold them here. Sarah Vance slammed an explosive charge against the door's locking mechanism. The blast reverberated through the fortress, and the team surged forward into the cavernous portal room. Corey's voice crackled over the comm. Zara's alive? Damn it, hunter teams, deploy! Find that bitch and bring her in, dead or alive. As the firefight intensified outside, Sarah noticed a flicker of movement in the shadows near the portal itself. A hooded figure manipulated hidden controls, waves of Dominion combat drones surging to life around the chamber. We've got company, she yelled, diving for cover as energy bolts seared the air. The corporate trader's eyes gleamed with malevolent triumph. Did you really think I'd let humanity claim all the glory? He sneered. Zara offered me power beyond your pathetic imagining. Kavi's eyes widened in recognition. It's his encryption. I've seen these patterns before. His fingers danced across his data pad, interfacing with the alien tech. I can bypass it, but I need time. Outside the chamber, Corey's team was being pushed back. Status report, he barked into the comm. Klein's laughter echoed through the chamber. Too late, rebels. He slammed his palm onto a glowing sigil. The air crackled with otherworldly energy as the Nexus portal began to activate. If I can't have it, no one will. The chamber shuddered as reality itself seemed to warp around the growing dimensional rift. Kavi worked furiously, sweat beating on his brow as he raced to counter Klein's sabotage. Zara located, a Marine's voice cut through the chaos. Lower hangar bay, she's trying to escape. Corey's voice rang out. I'm on it. Sarah, you're in charge here. Don't let that portal overload. As Corey sprinted towards his final confrontation with Zara, Sarah rallied the remaining troops. They pushed forward, inch by bloody inch, against waves of Dominion automatons. Sarah's plasma rifle found its mark, sending Klein staggering. As he fell backwards, the portal's energy lashed out, consuming him in a blinding flash. Now, Kavi, Sarah shouted. The engineer jammed his reconfigured device into the alien console. For a heart-stopping moment, nothing happened. Then with a deafening roar, the portal imploded. The shockwave knocked them off their feet, but the chamber held. 
Sarah's calm crackled to life. Corey's voice, breathless but triumphant. Zara's down. It's over. Sarah helped Kabi to his feet, both of them battered but alive. She keyed her calm, her voice hoarse but filled with quiet wonder. We did it. We actually did it. In the distance, beyond the ruined fortress walls, the first rays of a new dawn began to break over the galactic capital. The euphoria of victory was short-lived. As the dust settled on the galactic capital, Admiral Landry found herself mired in the complexities of reconstruction. The war room, once a hub of frantic tactical planning, now buzzed with heated political debates. We must strike now. General Thorne smacked his palm on the hollow table, causing the projected star map to flicker. The Dominion remnants are vulnerable. We can crush them once and for all. Chancellor Vexus's crystalline form shimmered as she spoke, her voice carrying a note of caution. Violence begets violence, General. We have an opportunity to forge a truly united galaxy. Chancellor Vexus's multifaceted eyes widened in recognition. No, she whispered. It can't be. As if on cue, the hollow table erupted with new data. Grainy footage showed entire worlds collapsing in on themselves, transformed into ravenous singularities that devoured light itself. The chamber erupted into chaos, but Landry's focus narrowed to a priority alert flashing on her comm. She opened the encrypted message, recognizing Reeve's signature. Dominion holdouts. Compromised, she read aloud, her voice cutting through the din. Harvester cultists led by... Garrett? The surviving leaders exchanged horrified glances as the full weight of their new reality crashed down upon them. Warlock Squadron, form up, Drake barked into his comm. Those energy readings are off the charts. We need to... As Drake's squad plummeted towards the surface, their sensors shrieked warnings of dimensional instabilities, tearing reality apart around them. The last thing he saw before impact was a towering monolithic structure, pulsing with eldritch energy. Move and you die, she growled. Who are you, and what the hell are you doing on this godforsaken rock? Drake raised his hand slowly. Lieutenant Colin Drake, Coalition Forces. We were sent to... He trailed off, taking in the nightmarish landscape around them. In the distance, the monolith loomed, surrounded by swarms of things that hurt his eyes to look at directly. The woman, Altara, he would later learn, lowered her weapon a fraction. Coalition, then you're here to help stop this madness? Before Drake could respond, the ground beneath them shuddered. A chilling, multi-toned howl echoed across the ruined plain. Altara grabbed his arm, hauling him to his feet. Run now, talk later, she hissed. The harvesters are coming. As they sprinted towards a hidden bunker, Drake's mind reeled. The harvesters, Altara's guerrilla resistance, the cosmic horrors erupting around them. None of this had been in the mission briefing. But as the bunker's blast doors sealed behind them, he knew with grim certainty that the fate of the stars now hinged on what happened next on this dead world called Ajax. Ajax. The name echoed in Drake's mind as he stared at the bunker's pitted metal walls. Altara's resistance fighters bustled around him, their faces grim masks of dedication. What do you know about the harvesters? Drake asked, his voice hoarse. Before she could elaborate, alarms blared. The bunker shook violently, dust raining from the ceiling. Altara cursed, grabbing her weapon. Time to move, pilot. Welcome to the end of everything. They sprinted through winding corridors, the sounds of battle growing louder. As they rounded a corner, Drake froze. A mass of writhing tentacles and metallic exoskeleton filled the hallway, assimilating screaming soldiers into its bulk. Harvester! Altara yelled, opening fire. They're spreading, Altara whispered, her face pale. We need to get off-world. Now. They fought their way to a hangar bay, commandeering a battered Dominion freighter. As they blasted free of Ajax's turbulent atmosphere, Drake's mind raced. The knowledge imparted by the monolith coalesced into terrifying clarity. We need to find Admiral Landry, he said, punching coordinates into the nav computer. I know how to stop this. Across the galaxy, fleets burned. Admiral Landry watched in horror as another wave of Harvester bio ships tore through her defensive lines. The multiphasic torpedoes had bought them time, 
but not nearly enough. Ma'am, a communications officer called out. We're receiving a transmission from, from Ajax. Admiral, I have the key to ending this, but we'll need to make a deal with the devil. Hours later, an unlikely war council convened. Landry, Chancellor Vexus, the reformed General Zarn of the Nigerian warriors, and a host of other desperate allies gathered to hear Drake's plan. The architects created a failsafe, Drake explained, his eyes feverish, a way to sever the dimensional bridge fueling the harvester invasion. But it's a two-pronged attack. We need teams on both sides of the rift. I'll lead the infiltration team to the architect ringworld, she said, her voice steel. We'll activate their energizers. Landry nodded, her expression grim. Then let's get to work. We have a universe to save. Now, Altara, he shouted into the comm as his sensors registered the energizers aligning. Release the charges. Drake's fighter streaked towards the pulsing center of the harvester dimension. As Altara's voice crackled in affirmative, he closed his eyes. The universe held its breath. Then in a cosmic convulsion of unimaginable power, everything changed. Changed. The cosmic energies that had torn through Drake's fighter dissipated, leaving him adrift in an endless void. His body felt insubstantial, his consciousness expanding beyond physical bounds. Lieutenant Drake, do you copy? Admiral Landry's voice echoed through the emptiness, tinged with static and desperation. I know, Drake's voice reverberated, but I have a solution. We need to build quantum stabilizers, massive structures to reinforce the fabric of reality. Kavi, his face haggard from days without sleep, leaned forward. Intergalactic quantum barriers? It's theoretical, but it could work. We'd need unprecedented resources, though. You propose we pillage alternate realities? She asked, her multifaceted eyes narrowing. The ethical implications alone. Ethics won't matter if reality itself unravels, General Zarn interrupted, mandibles clicking. We must act decisively. Landry nodded grimly. Agreed. I'm authorizing Operation Infinity Brace effective immediately. We'll dispatch stealth vessels to secure the materials we need. Weeks later, Altara's ship emerged from a shimmering portal above a resource-rich world in a collapsing universe. The planet's surface roiled with untapped energy, ripe for the taking. The viewscreen filled with grotesque, writhing forms. Living starships piloted by mutated Dominion warlords. Tentacles of pure energy lashed out, tearing holes in the fabric of space-time. Evasive maneuvers, Altara barked. We can't lose this payload. Sir? His exo protested as they strip-mined their third planet that day. These worlds are inhabited. We can't just... We can and we will, Phoenix snarled. It's us or them. Keep going. As she weighed her options, Drake's ethereal presence materialized. Admiral, his disembodied voice intoned, I've detected new incursions. The situation is escalating. Landry squared her shoulders, prepared to make the hardest decision of her career. The fate of reality itself hung in the balance. As if in response to her decision, alarms blared across the command center. Holographic displays flickered to life, showing a nightmarish scene unfolding across multiple sectors. Admiral, Lieutenant Kavi shouted, we're detecting massive quantum distortions emanating from the completed stabilizers. Her words were cut off as the deck beneath her feet shuddered. Through the viewscreen, she watched in horror as an entire planet simply vanished consumed by a rapidly expanding singularity. It's Phoenix, Drake's disembodied voice resonated with impossibly strong fury. His forces have seized control of the stabilizers. They're attempting to harvest chrono energize from breached singularities. Landry's mind raced. She keyed her comm, connecting to a highly encrypted channel. Captain Archer, this is Landry. Your worst-case scenario just became reality. Engage Operation Sundown, now. You heard the Admiral, Archer growled. Phoenix has gone rogue. We shut down those stabilizers by any means necessary. As Archer's team moved to neutralize the compromised nexus points, the very fabric of reality began to unravel. Entire star systems collided, their temporal boundaries shattered. On what was once a peaceful agrarian world, Dominion warlords, their bodies twisted by exposure to cosmic horrors, tore open dimensional rifts, 
Through these wounds in space-time poured nightmarish armies, their forms defying description. General Zarn's mandibles clicked in agitation as he surveyed the bedlam from his command ship. All legions, form containment spheres, he barked. We must isolate these quantum fractures before... Sabotage, Zarn hissed. He slammed a clawed appendage against the comms panel. All ships, commence emergency civilian evac. His words were lost in static as another quantum tremor ripped through the sector. On the shattered remnants of a space station, Altara and her team fought a desperate holding action against a horde of harvester bioborgs. Their twisted forms, an unholy fusion of alien flesh and coalition cybernetics, surged forward relentlessly. We can't hold this position, Altara shouted, her rifle's energy cells depleted. Fall back to the quantum arrays. As her squad retreated, Altra caught a glimpse through a ruptured bulkhead of the madness beyond. Planets, stars, entire galaxies collided and merged in a cosmic maelstrom. The universe itself seemed to be tearing itself apart. In the heart of this chaos, on a planetoid that seemed to exist in multiple realities simultaneously, Phoenix watched with maniacal glee. His eyes, once human, now pulsed with otherworldly energy. Soon, he whispered, soon we'll be free of this doomed reality. A proximity alert chimed. Phoenix's lips curled into a sneer as he recognized the energy signature of an incoming stealth craft. Archer, he spat, right on schedule. As Archer's commandos began their desperate assault on Nimbus, Admiral Landry stared at the tactical hologram. Every passing moment brought fresh reports of devastation, of entire worlds lost to the quantum cataclysm. All ships, she commanded, her voice carrying across what remained of Coalition space. This is Admiral Landry. Converge on these coordinates. We make our final stand here. The universe hung in the balance as Archer's team fought their way through Phoenix's sanctum, racing against time to prevent total annihilation. With each step, reality itself seemed to warp and twist around them, the boundaries between dimensions growing ever thinner. Stay sharp, Archer growled, his voice barely audible over the cacophony. We're in the belly of the beast now. They rounded a corner and froze. Before them stood a nightmarish fusion of man and machine, tendrils of biomechanical matter writhing around a core that pulsed with quantum energy. It took Archer a moment to recognize the thing that had once been Phoenix. Phoenix's new form towered over them, eyes blazing with otherworldly power. When he spoke, his voice reverberated through multiple realities simultaneously. Archer, the entity hissed, you're too late. The exodus begins now. With a gesture, Phoenix activated the massive device behind him. Reality itself began to warp and tear around them. Archer's team sprang into action, engaging the monstrous Bioborg guardians that materialized to defend their master. Plasma bolts seared the air as Archer's commandos fought with desperate valor. One by one, they fell to the relentless onslaught. Vex's scream cut off abruptly as a tendril of living metal pierced her chest. Sergeant Kroll's head exploded in a spray of gore as he pushed Archer clear of a psychic blast. This ends now, Phoenix, Archer snarled, raising his weapon. Phoenix's laughter echoed across dimensions. No, old friend, this is only the beginning. Their minds clashed in a titanic psychic duel. Reality itself buckled under the strain of their battling wills. Archer felt his sanity fraying as visions of cosmic horror seared themselves into his brain. Outside the chamber, what remained of the Rebel Alliance fought a desperate holding action. General Zarn's mandibles clicked furiously as he coordinated the defense against waves of interdimensional predators. On the bridge of her flagship, Admiral Landry watched in mounting horror as the situation spiraled out of control. Alarms blared as sensors registered critical failures across the quantum stabilizer network. Ma'am, her exo reported, voice tight with fear. We can't contain it. The implosion is spreading exponentially. Landry's face was grim as she keyed the fleet-wide comm. All ships, this is Admiral Landry. Execute ARC protocol immediately. May the void have mercy on us all. As the Coalition Armada began its desperate flight towards the naked singularity, Archer felt something give in his mental battle with Phoenix. 
With a final Herculean effort, he shattered the core of Phoenix's consciousness. The universe screamed as it died, reality collapsing into the infinite mass of the singularity. In the final moments before the ultimate event horizon, Landry's fleet plunged into the unknown, carrying with them the last desperate hope for a new beginning, beyond the end of everything. Structural integrity failing, her exo shouted over the din of alarms. We're losing. His words cut off as reality itself seemed to stretch and snap. For an eternal instant, Landry felt her consciousness smeared across countless dimensions. Then, with a soundless thunderclap, they emerged. Status report, she croaked, her throat raw. Multiple ships lost in transit, came the grim reply. Life support critical. No recognizable stellar formations detected. Landry's gut clenched. She keyed the fleet-wide calm, her voice steady despite the growing dread. All ships initiate power conservation protocols. We need to... A proximity alert cut her off. General Zarn's insectoid face appeared on screen, mandibles twitching with agitation. Admiral, we've detected gravitational anomalies, sending scout ships to investigate. By the void, Zarn's shriek pierced the comms. Spatial warping detected. We're losing contact with... Static filled the channel. On the tactical display, icons representing Zarn's fighters winked out one by one. Hours stretched into days as the remnants of humanity's last hope drifted in the cosmic abyss. Reeves, her chief analyst, delivered the final blow to their fragile morale. Mutiny brewed in the shadows. Whispers of blame turned to shouts, then to violence. As Landry struggled to maintain order, Chancellor Vexus made a startling announcement. As debate raged, an unexpected figure materialized on the command deck. Xorn, once a dreaded Dominion warlord, now stood before them, transformed. His body shimmered with otherworldly energy, eyes alight with newfound wisdom. I have witnessed the truth in Archer's vision. Kazorn's voice resonated with alien harmonics. Unity is our salvation. We must act as one to forge our new home. Landry studied the being that had once been her sworn enemy. In his metamorphosis, she saw a reflection of humanity's own potential for change. With a deep breath, she made her decision. Prepare for Genesis Protocol, she ordered. We reshape this universe, or we perish in the attempt. Tomb. The words caught in her throat as the void before them erupted in a blaze of cosmic fire. Anti-matter detonation successful, Vexus shouted, his hologram flickering wildly. Spatial expansion detected across all sectors. Landry gripped her chair as the ship shuddered, buffeted by waves of primordial energy. Through the view screen, she watched in awe as galaxies bloomed like celestial flowers, stars igniting in a dazzling spectacle of creation. It's working, Reeves breathed, his eyes wide as he studied the incoming data. But it's not enough. The new structures are unstable, collapsing almost as quickly as they form. Xorn's transformed visage appeared on the main display, his voice resonating with newfound authority. We must push further. A final detonation focused on a central point. It is our only hope. The risks, Landry began, but Vexus cut her off. Are irrelevant, the Chancellor stated flatly. We are already dead if we do nothing. Landry's mind raced, weighing impossible choices. Even if we agree, how do we survive the blast? Our engines are shot. We can't outrun it. Reeves cleared his throat. There might be a way. If we can cobble together a displacement array using the tech we salvaged. Do it, Landry ordered, her voice leaving no room for debate. Kavi, assist Reeves. You have six hours. The next few hours passed in a blur of frantic activity. Landry coordinated the fleet's remaining resources, preparing for what could be their final stand against oblivion itself. Kazorn's engineers worked tirelessly, reconfiguring antimatter projectors into a vast, interconnected web. It should generate a subspace bubble, Kavi explained, her voice tight with exhaustion. In theory, it'll shift us just outside of normal space-time during the detonation. In theory, Landry repeated, her mouth dry. And if it fails? She took a deep breath, steeling herself for what came next. Vexus, Kazorn, initiate the final detonation. 
A hush fell over the bridge as the antimatter arrays powered up. The cosmos itself seemed to hold its breath, teetering on the knife edge between rebirth and annihilation. Detonation in three, Omaha two, one, Vexus's voice rang out. Landry's world exploded into blinding light as the displacement field engulfed the fleet. Reality twisted, folded, and shattered around them. For an eternity compressed into a heartbeat, they existed everywhere and nowhere, suspended in a fragile bubble as the universe remade itself in fire and fury. Then, with a lurch that sent everyone sprawling, they snapped back into existence. Alarms blared and consoles sparked as systems struggled to reboot. Status report, Landry barked, pulling herself to her feet. As the view screen flickered to life, a collective gasp rose from the bridge crew, where once there had been empty void, now a tapestry of stars and nascent galaxies stretched as far as their sensors could detect. It whispered, awe evident even in his holographic form. We've done it. A new cosmos ripe for... His words cut off as a proximity alert shrieked. On the tactical display, hundreds of unidentified objects suddenly appeared, converging on their position. Multiple contacts, the sensor officer shouted. They're... I don't know what they are, but they're closing fast. Landry's eyes narrowed as she studied the approaching swarm. Whatever they'd birthed in this new reality, it seemed the cosmos wasn't content to leave them in peace. She straightened her uniform, eyebrows furrowed. All ships, battle stations, she commanded. Let's see what our newborn universe has in store for us. Us, Landry's voice rang out, steely drive evident in every syllable. Landry's brow furrowed. Kindred? We don't have much choice, Landry declared. Prep a shuttle. I'll lead the diplomatic team myself. A tall figure stepped forward, his ageless face serene. Welcome, Admiral Landry. We are the Eternals, and we've been expecting you. Landry's hand instinctively tightened on her sidearm. How do you know my name? The Eternal smiled. Because we remember being you, in a sense. We are your descendants, shaped by billions of years of evolution across cosmic cycles. He gestured and holographic displays materialized, showing the birth and death of universes. Your journey through the singularity fractured your essences across time and space. We are the result, a trans-temporal civilization born from the survivors of your era. Landry's mind reeled. That's impossible. We just left our universe. Time is not the linear construct you once believed, another Eternal interjected. We have cultivated this reality, prepared it for your arrival. As they walked through gleaming cityscapes, the Eternals revealed more. They spoke of humanity's true origins in a cosmic incubator predating the Big Bang, of cycles of universal rebirth, and of their role as stewards of existence itself. Landry frowned. And if we choose not to? Tempered? Landry's voice was dangerously quiet. You mean, controlled. We offer you paradise, the Elder Eternal stated, a chance to transcend your limited existence. Landry's mind focused. At the cost of our freedom, our identity, she shook her head. No, we'll make our own way. There are habitable worlds out there. We'll settle one of those. We reject subjugation, Landry snapped. No matter how gift-wrapped it comes, energy crackled in the air as the two groups faced off. Humanity's past and supposed future, locked in a standoff that threatened to ignite this newborn universe in conflict once more. More. Energy crackled between the two groups, the air thick with tension. You would doom yourselves to primitive existence? The Elder Eternal's voice dripped with disdain. Landry stood her ground. We choose our own path. Always have, always will. The Eternal's eyes narrowed. So be it. What have you done? Landry demanded, fighting a sudden wave of nausea. Ensured the safety of our grand design, the Eternal replied coldly. You leave us no choice but to neutralize the threat you pose. Never, Landry spat. She keyed her calm. All units fall back to quarantine protocols. Zarn, Kazorn, initiate countermeasures. As Landry's team retreated, the Eternals made no move to stop them. 
their serene faces belied the devastation they'd unleashed. Back on the flagship, chaos reigned. Crew members writhed in agony, their bodies twisting in impossible ways. Zarn barked orders, his tentacles flying over control panels as he coordinated with Kazorn to establish containment zones. It's not just us, Zorn growled, his newly transformed body flickering with energy. The Nigean warriors, they're affected too. Something about our augmented genetics. Do it, Landry ordered. And Kavi, I need you working on something bigger. If this goes south, we need a final option. As Reeves's strike teams launched their desperate assault, Landry watched the tactical display with growing dread. The Eternals' defenses seemed to anticipate their every move, diverting attacks with uncanny precision. How are they doing this? Landry muttered. Kavi's voice crackled over the comm. Admiral, I might have an answer. And a solution. But you're not going to like it. Landry listened as Kavi outlined her plan. A cosmic displacement engine salvaged from the Phoenix disaster. An artificial entropy singularity that could wipe out the Eternals. And potentially this entire newborn universe. It's insane, Landry breathed. It's our only shot, Kavi replied. As Landry weighed the impossible choice, her console chimed. A data burst, origin unknown, flooded her screen. Her eyes widened as she absorbed the information. Hints of a deeper conspiracy, a web of causality stretching back to the very dawn of their universe. The AI's hologram flickered. Admiral, surely we can negotiate. That's an order, Landry snapped. We're getting out of here, now. As the Coalition fleet disengaged from the Dyson Sphere, alarms blared. The Eternals' defenses surged to life, a web of energy fields materializing to ensnare them. Landry's heart made. Kazorn, Zarn, I need you to buy us time. Hit them hard, hit them fast. The Nigean warriors needed no further encouragement. Their ships broke formation, unleashing a barrage of firepower against the Eternals' outer defenses. The void erupted in a dazzling light show of destruction. Meanwhile, Reeves's infiltration teams had penetrated deep into the Megasphere's systems. Their coded transmissions painted a picture of the Eternal's true nature and the entity behind it all. Landry's mind raced. If we can neutralize Omega, we might have a shot at escape. Reeves, focus your teams on finding its control nexus. The next hours passed in a blur of coordinated strikes and desperate maneuvers. Kazorn and Zarn's forces clashed with eternal sentries in blistering dogfights, while Reeves' infiltrators wormed their way deeper into the Megasphere's core. In engineering, Kavi's team worked feverishly to stabilize their cosmic displacement prototype. We're close, she reported, sweat beating on her brow. But without a potent enough antimatter payload, we won't be able to jump far enough to escape their reach. Landry nodded grimly. Keep at it. It might be our only way out of this mess. Fall back, Landry ordered, watching the tactical display with growing dread. All units regroup at... Her words died in her throat as a shimmering rift tore open on the bridge. Through it stepped a figure that sent shockwaves of disbelief through the crew, an older, battle-worn version of Landry herself. I am Darius, the newcomer announced, his voice carrying the weight of eons. And you must listen carefully. Everything you think you know is wrong. Darius nodded solemnly. Part of a greater design, yes, but no less real, no less meaningful. As temporal energies crackled around them, Landry stood at the precipice of a decision that would shape not just this newborn universe, but potentially all of creation. The next move was hers, and the consequences would echo across realities yet unseen. Landry's eyes narrowed as she absorbed Darius's words. The weight of countless lives pressed down upon her, each second stretching into eternity as she wrestled with the implications. The bridge erupted in chaos. Kabi's hologram flickered to life, her face contorted in fury. You can't seriously be considering this. It's another trick, another form of control. As if on cue, the megasphere shuddered. Proximity alarms blared as eternal forces converged on their position. On the tactical display, Landry watched in horror as Zarn's ships broke formation, turning to face their former allies. All units, hold fire, 
Landry barked, but it was too late. The void erupted in a dazzling light show of destruction as loyalist and eternal forces clashed with Zarn's defectors. Landry hesitated, her gaze locked on Darius. The older version of herself stood impassive, watching the carnage unfold with ancient eyes. Do it, Landry growled. Reeves, get your team's planet side. Find Omega's avatars and shut them down. Darius stepped forward. The Eternals exist beyond linear time. They see probabilities, potentialities. A proximity alert cut through the air. On the main view screen, Kazorn's battered flagship limped into view, trailing debris and venting atmosphere. The noble Nigean's life signs flatlined, his ship consumed in a brilliant explosion as eternal weapons found their mark. Admiral, no! Darius lunged forward, but it was too late. With a thought, Landry authorized the launch sequence. A shockwave of data cascaded through the megasphere. Eternal forces disengaged, their ships converging on a colossal wormhole that tore open in the fabric of space-time. What have you done? Landry demanded. Saved your future, Darius replied grimly. The Eternals are banished, exiled to avoid beyond physical existence. You have your autonomy, Admiral. But at what cost? As if in answer, the megasphere shuddered violently. Landry watched in horror as hull breaches spiraled outward, atmosphere venting into space faster than containment protocols could compensate. All hands, abandon ship! Landry's voice rang out across all frequencies. Make for the outer planets. Darius, you said you could guide us? The older Landry nodded, his form already beginning to fade. There's a world on the system's edge, barely habitable, but it will sustain you. Go now, before it's too late. As escape pods and shuttles streamed away from the dying megasphere, Landry stood rooted to the bridge. She watched the colossal structure that had been their salvation and near destruction grow smaller in the view screen. Was it worth it? She whispered to herself, the question hanging unanswered in the emptiness of space. The evacuation sirens wailed as Landry watched the last shuttle break atmosphere. Her grip tightened on the command console. Nuckles tightening against the flickering displays. Landry nodded, her eyes fixed on the rapidly shrinking megasphere. Initiate jump sequence. Let's hope Darius wasn't lying about our destination. As if summoned by her words, reality itself seemed to shudder. The view screen distorted, space-time twisting into impossible geometries. A violent tremor rocked the bridge, sending crew members sprawling. Gravitational shear detected! Kavi's hologram flickered to life, her face etched with concern. The displacement blast, it's destabilized local space-time. Landry gritted her teeth, barking orders as alarms blared. All ships, evasive maneuvers. Kavi, reroute power to inertial dampers. What the hell? Reeves breathed, his eyes wide. Quantum echoes, Darius explained, his form wavering. Alternate realities bleeding through. We must press on. In engineering, Kavi's team worked feverishly to keep systems online. The nanoswarms are evolving, she reported, exhaustion evident in her voice. They're trying to rewrite our DNA at the cellular level. When they finally achieved landfall, it was on a world hanging in an impossible void. Oxygen-rich atmosphere swirled above barren plains, the horizon curving sharply upward to reveal unfamiliar stars. Landry surveyed the alien landscape, her eyes hardened. How long? As colonization efforts began, Darius grew increasingly erratic. His eyes gleamed with an unsettling light as he spoke of humanity's destiny, of ascension beyond mortal form. We were meant for more than this, he insisted, gesturing at the nascent colony. The prime creator awaits. Landry watched him warily, unease growing with each passing day. The ideological divide widened, whispers of discontent spreading through the settlement. Matters came to a head in the newly constructed command center. Landry confronted Darius, her voice sharp. We didn't come this far to become pawns in some cosmic game. The ensuing battle was swift and brutal. Marines poured into the room, weapons trained on the being that wore Landry's face. Darius lashed out with impossible strength, but numbers prevailed. As Darius fell, a cold smile played across his lips. 
A piercing tone filled the air, and in the sky above, pinpricks of light heralded the Eternal's return. Landry's mind raced. She turned to Kavi, her expression grim. How many antimatter warheads do we have left? She took one last look at the world they'd fought so hard to claim. In the distance, arboreal, terraforming arrays stretched towards the alien sky, a dream of a future now denied. The viewscreen blazed white as searing plasma engulfed the planetoid. As the singularity aperture began to close, Landry caught a final glimpse of their burning refuge. The prophesied future lay in ashes, but humanity's fate was now their own to forge. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.